we were on the chapter of poverty, uh, inequality and growth and we have uh, discussed that uh, poverty and growth are negatively uh, related with each other. Whenever there will be poverty, obviously that will affect badly on uh, economic growth. We have discussed the measurement of poverty, how uh, we can measure the poverty. Uh, we discussed about uh, size distribution of income and functional distribution of income and then we have discussed about the Lorentz curve. Today's topic is poverty, inequality and social welfare. It means the poverty leads to inequality and it is also affecting the social welfare. Whenever we talk about this question the, the or this topic, the question raised in our mind that what's so bad about extreme inequality okay it means the poverty and inequality these are related so throughout this chapter we are assuming that social welfare depends positively on the level of income per capita but negatively on poverty and negatively on the level of inequality as these terms uh, have yet been uh, defined the problem of absolute poverty is obvious. You know about the absolute poverty, okay? This is about the uh, mm, barely uh, face or barely meet the uh, necessities. Roti Kaplamagan. No civilized people can feel satisfied with a state of affairs in which their fellow human exist in a condition of such absolute human misery, okay? Which is probably why every major religion has emphasized the importance of working to alleviate poverty and is uh, at least one of the reasons why international development assistance has the near nearly universal support of every democratic nation it means first of all every nation they have to eliminate the poverty and then they must think about the economic growth okay but it may be reasonable asked if our top uh, priority is the alleviation of absolute poverty why should relative inequality be a concern we have seen that inequality among the poor is a critical factor in understanding the severity of poverty and the impact of market and policy changes on the poor but why should we be concerned with inequality among those above the poverty line so this is the question so uh, first of all there are three major answers to these questions okay it means the power poverty leads to inequality we are more concerned about the poverty and we are more concerned about the poverty and poverty leads to inequality so there are three answers of this question first of all extreme income inequality leads to economic inefficiency what does it mean this is partly because at any given average income the higher the inequality is smaller the fraction of population that qualifies for a loan or other credit it means people ha have less income they have more uh, poverty and inequality. Indeed, one definition of relative poverty is the lack of collateral. Low-income individuals cannot borrow money. They generally cannot adequately educate their children or start and expand a business. Moreover, with high inequality, the overall rate of saving in the economy tends to be lower because the highest rate of marginal saving is usually found among the middle classes so this is the first main reason that extreme income inequality that leads to economic efficiency uh, inefficiency it means the people have no income when they have no income it means how they can get the loan it means uh, they don't know that whether they will get income in the future or not so it means they even obviously the loan will be available on some rate of interest they cannot pay 
uh, that level and they cannot take the loan and they cannot educate the people so uh, it means in other words the poverty leads to unemployment also so uh, it affects the saving uh, uh, it means they have the high inequality so saving will be affected okay and that low um, or uh, you are saying that the highest rate of marginal saving that is found among the middle classes middle classes have these problems also although the rich may save a large dollar amount they typically save a smaller fraction of their incomes mostly you see that people exchange their money into dollars okay into euro and whenever the, these currencies go up mostly they uh, use these or uh, on the basis of these currencies or on the basis of these dollar and euro they can uh, visit abroad when we should talk about uh, the uh, um, landlords or uh, rich people and landlords business leaders politicians and other rich elites are known to spend much of their income on imported luxury goods gold jewelry expensive houses and um, foreign travel or to seek safe heavens abroad for the saving in what is known as capital flight okay in one side you see that extreme income inequality lead to economic inefficiency and on other side whenever you see that many rich people they save uh, the amount in the dollars or in the euros obviously it means this is also income inequality because rich people are getting richer and poor people are more poorer and mostly obviously rich people they go abroad whenever they go abroad and they um, get or uh, they purchase more imported goods jewelry gold items etc it means they are spending their income uh, to the abroad so it is called the capital flight also and this will create the income inequality for the uh, economy and uh, such saving and investments do not add to the nation's productive uh, resources whenever the people will purchase for their uh, only um, their uh, own purposes so this will not add to the economy in fact they represent substantial drains on these uh, resources okay it means this is the capital flight in short the rich do not generally save and invest significantly large proportion of their incomes uh, than the middle class or even the poor and uh, the second reason uh, to be concerned with inequality about the above the poverty line is that extreme income disparities undermine social uh, stability and solidarity as you know that whenever there is a more inequality it will disturb the equilibrium of the economy and mm, the economy will be socially unstable the people uh, they will become more poorer most of the people they are living below the uh, poverty line they have the problem of uh, absolute poverty and uh, most of the children they cannot get education because they are bearing the burden of their families and uh, this is the main reason that uh, over whenever you see the literacy rate is uh, very low it's the main reason that uh, our nation this is considered as the more uh, poor uh, nation not more poor nation but you can say that this is developing nation uh, where literacy rate of uh, whenever you talk about the females that is about um, uh, 49 or uh, near 50 percent and whenever you talk about the male literacy rate okay uh, this is near 60 percent and overall literacy rate is 58 percent it means the literacy rate is very low as the as the people are more uh, poorer and they are living below the poverty line so high inequality strengthens the political power of the rich and hence their economic bargaining power it means the the income this is the uh, concentrated uh, among the few people so this is the um, basic reason that uh, the rich people they are more richer and the poor people they are 
uh, more poorer. So um, usually this power will be used to encourage um, outcomes favorable to uh, rich people uh, and high inequality facilitates rent seeking um, including actions such as excessive lobbying, uh, large political donations, bribery, etc. Okay? It means it will create so many issues. When resources are allocated to such rent seeking behaviors, they are diverted from productive purposes that could lead to the faster growth. Even worse, high inequality makes poor institutions very difficult to improve because the few with money and power are likely to view themselves as worse off from socially efficient reforms and so they have the motive and the means of resist it. So this is the main reason that uh, obviously when the income is concentrated among the few people so it will create the problems for the economy also okay mm. so there are a lot of issues will be raised so uh, uh, whenever we uh, talk about uh, the inequality obviously the high inequality may also lead the poor to support uh, policies that can be self-defeating countries with extreme inequalities uh, like Iran have undergone upheavals or extended civil strife that have caused complex lives and set back development progress by decades. So in other words, whenever you see that this high inequality that because of this, uh, the, uh, the poli uh, politicians, they have the more bargaining power. There will be so many issues that can be raised, bribery, lobbying, etc. And finally, extreme inequality is generally viewed as unfair. As you know that this is unfair, obviously, the philosopher John Rawls proposed as thought experiment uh, to help clarify why this is so. Okay, Suppose that before you were born into the world, you had a chance to select the overall level of inequality among the Earth's people, but not your own identity. So... Uh, that is, you might be born as Bill Gates, but you might be born as the most uh, uh, poor people in rural Ethiopia. The question is facing this kind of risk. Would you vote for an income distribution that was more equal or less equal than the one you see around you? If the degree of equality had no effect on the level of income or rate of growth, most people vote for nearly perfect equality, obviously. Of course, if everyone had the same income, no matter what, there would be little incentive to work hard, gain skills or innovative. If all the people in the world, they are getting the same level of income, so there will be no issues. So many people, they are getting the skill. As a result, most people vote for some uh, equality. So this was the question we have asked that uh, whenever we talk about uh, these three things, poverty, inequality, and social welfare, these are related. It means, in other words, whenever you see that this inequality is affecting the economic efficiency and social welfare okay first of all i have told you this is um, the people they have uh, they are facing the issues mostly uh, poor people they uh, they are unable to get even loans for the children education and second uh, this may lead to the capital flight and capital flight is this is the main reason that uh, is lowering down or affecting the social welfare also okay and um, obviously this uh, this is affecting the um, bargaining power of the people and um, this is this is considered as unfair then uh, we're going to uh, discuss this the uh, Kuznets uh, inverted hypothesis how he has uh, defined the uh, income 
inequality. Um, so Simon Kuznert suggested that in the early stages of economic growth, the distribution of income will tend to worsen only at later stages uh, will it improve. Okay, this is about the Kuznet curve which will be shown in the uh, next slide. So this observation came to be characterized by the inverted U Kuznet's curve and this graph reflecting the relationship between country's income per capita and its inequality of income distribution. Obviously, we are more concerned about the poverty and growth. So, um, uh, uh, the Simon Kuznet, uh, 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 he is the economist who has uh, graphically explained the relationship between income per capita and uh, inequality uh, of the income uh, distribution. And uh, uh, he plotted the uh, Kuznet curve, okay, and actually uh, this will explain the inequality. So explanation as to why inequality might, might worsen during the early stages of economic growth before eventually improving as are numerous okay so first of all um, uh, this is about uh, growth and distribution and business hypothesis is inverted u shaped and they have shown uh, they are uh, they are explaining the income inequality increases during the early stages of growth so there are many reasons that why income inequality increases during the early uh, stages of growth because this is the reason that early growth may in accordance with the Levis model be concentrated in the modern industrial sector where employment is limited but wages and productivity are high okay in early stages of the growth whenever you talk about the early stages of growth so here you are saying that income inequality increases in the early um, uh, stages of growth okay uh, they almost always relate to the nature of structural uh, change. Early growth may in accordance with the Levis model. And, you, uh, and uh, I have explained the Levis model briefly uh, in previous chapter. Okay. And here, uh, this is the first point. And second point, they are uh, saying the income inequality increases during a later stages of growth with redistribution of income and wealth. Income inequality increases early stages and income uh, equality, sorry, income equality increases during a later stages of growth with redistribution of income and growth. And you can see here, uh, this graph is showing the Kuznets uh, curve. And as just noted, the Kuznet curve can be generated by a steady process of modern sector enlargement growth as a country develops from a traditional to modern economy as Levis model said. Alternatively, returns to education may first rise as the emerging, uh, wherever I am explaining about the early stages. Okay, So uh, this is the explanation that um, uh, returns to education may first rise as the emerging modern sector demands skills and then may fall as the supply of educated workers increases and the supply of unskilled workers falls. So while the Kuznet did not specify the mechanism by which his inverted U hypothesis was supposed to occur, it could in principle be uh, consistent with a sequential process of economic development. But as shown earlier, traditional and modern sector enrichment would tend to pull inequality in opposing directions. So net change in inequality is ambiguous or in doubt and the validity of the Kuznet curve is an uh, empirical question also. Uh, you can explain, in, this is the early stages of the Kuznet hypothesis, Kuznet curve, and this is the later stages, okay? 
in this the whenever you talk about the early stages okay it means uh, uh, the country is at subsistence level okay subsistence level and then country reach to this extreme line where uh, the growth is going to occur after after this threshold level as uh, this uh, is explaining that after a later stage with redistribution of income and wealth the income equality increases okay so here the income inequality increases means the poor people uh, they are more poorer rich people are more richer after that this uh, inequality uh, they will be ended here this is threshold level and after that the people have more income they are spending on welfare they are spending on more um, uh, more other purposes for the people so here the income inequality will go to increase Uh, so um, I just uh, explain the evidence of uh, uh, the Kuznet hypothesis or the this Kuznet curve. Um, as you see here, uh, this Kuznet curve. This is showing the relationship between uh, gross national per capita and um, Gini coefficient. You can also make this graph uh, about the uh, uh, for the Pakistan also, okay. Uh, so this graph is actually uh, explaining a good way about the growth and uh, inequality actually. Uh, so here, this is your task that you can uh, get the GN, uh, GNI per capital of the Pakistan for the different years okay and take the different values of the Gini coefficient and you can make this uh, graph easily and uh, you can see that he, here it will be the inverted uh, u-shaped or not for this your um, uh, developing nation as this curve is showing the relationship between countries' income uh, and inequality of uh, uh, income distribution. Okay, so uh, the Kuznet curve that is seen here. Uh, Uh, the x-axis and y-axis you can see here the x-axis is gni per capita and y-axis gini uh, coefficient okay and this um, the next is uh, human this is showing the human uh, poverty index and how uh, could you make this human poverty index actually as uh, in second chapter we have discussed about the human development index okay but here we are talking about human um, poverty index okay and this is measured in terms of deprivation of uh, life years of uh, life uh, expectancy okay and basic education which is adult illiteracy and basic needs lack of access to health services access to safety water and number of malnourished children so these three factors are used to measure the human poverty index this is uh, the chapter of poverty and inequality and you can uh, get so many points of the poverty about the uh, uh, Pakistan also okay uh, you must read uh, the many things from uh, other sources also okay but first 
source is your book okay book is very important this is this is from from actually um, todaro and smith okay this is uh, from todaro and smith chapter as you know there are policies of income distribution but first of all you must keep in mind that growth and poverty whenever you talk about this is a main question that the growth and poverty is related okay so here uh, it is the main question that are the reduction of poverty and the acceleration of growth in conflict or are they complementary okay means poverty and growth they are related they are growing or um, whether there is conflict traditionally a body of opinion held that rapid growth is bad for the poor because they would be bypassed and marginalized by the structural change of modern growth beyond this there had been considerable concern in policy circles that in public expenditures required for the reduction of poverty would entail a reduction in rate of growth the concern that concentrated efforts to lower poverty would slow the rate of growth parallel the arguments that countries with low inequality would experience slower growth okay in particular if there was redistribution of income or assets from rich to poor even through progressive taxation the concern was expressed that saving would fall however while the middle class generally has the highest saving rates the marginal saving rates of the poor when viewed from the holistic per perspective are not small in addition to financial saving the poor tend to spend additional income on improved nutrition education for their children improvements in housing conditions and other expenditures that especially at poverty levels shows investments rather than consumption there are at least five reasons why policies focused toward reducing poverty levels need not led to slower rate of growth and indeed could help to accelerate growth so whenever you will reduce the poverty ultimately it will increase the growth it will not decrease the growth and um, obviously whenever the most of the people they will get rid uh, from living below the poverty line so it will enhance the economic growth it will enhance the opportunities for the people people have the choices widespread uh, poverty creates condition in which the poor have no access to credit they are unable to finance their children's education and in the absence of physical or monetary investment opportunities have many children as a source of old age financial security this is the first reason second reason is the rich in many uh poor countries are generally not noted uh for their desire to save and invest for substantial proportion of their income in the uh, local in, uh, local economy as you see in your uh, when you see your your um, pakistan economy so the rich people uh they are saving more and they are spending more but they are not uh, thinking about the poor people and third the low income and low level of living for the poor which are manifested in poor health nutrition and education can lower their economic productivity and lead directly in and indirectly to slower growth
and fourth reason is raising the income level of the poor will stimulate the overall increase in the demand for locally produced necessary products like food and clothing whereas the rich tend to spend more of their additional income on imported uh, luxury items and the reduction of mass poverty can stimulate healthy economic expansion by acting as a powerful material and psychological incentive to widespread public participation in the development process okay so here there was the question that whether the uh, this uh, whenever you talk about reduction of poverty okay whether this will accelerate the growth or not so obviously whenever you reduce the poverty it will accelerate the growth okay and whenever uh, you talk about poverty so it means uh, the absence of the uh, necessary items whenever uh, absence of the necessary items whenever you will reduce the poverty okay so people have the opportunities to gain uh, to gain from the uh, income or uh, they are uh, not facing the uh, problem and here uh, i am talking about uh, policies of uh, income uh, distribution and uh, you must think that women and poverty are also uh, there there is some uh, relationship okay women and poverty okay so it means the women make up a substantial uh, majority of the world's poor if we compare the lives of the inhabitants of the poor communities throughout the developing world uh, we would discover that virtually everywhere women and children experience the harshest deprivation they are more likely to be poor and malnourished and less likely to receive medical services clean water sanitation and the uh, benefits the prevalence of female headed households the lower earning capacity of women and their limited control over their spouses income all contribute to this disturbing phenomenon okay in addition women have less access to education formal sector employment social security and government employment program so that's why the women and poverty are also related if the women are earning so it means it has less effect on reducing the poverty in other words these facts combine to ensure the poor women's financial resources are meager or less and unstable relative to men's so um how the policies should be made for the income uh, distribution to reduce the problems first of all they are saying the remove factor price distortions okay remove the factor price distortions and get factor prices right and second is land distribution and supportive farm services okay and third should be income redistribution means there should be progressive taxation and uh, transfer payments so these are considering some policies for income distribution 
ओके एंड देर आर सम अदर पॉलिसीज कैन बी टेकन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दे आर सेम रिमूव फैक्टर प्राइस डिस्ट्रॉक्शन ओके फैक्टर प्राइस मीन्स यू आर टॉक अबाउट द प्राइस ऑफ फैक्ट्रीज ऑफ प्रोडक्शन वेजिस रेंट इंटरेस्ट एंड ऑल्ट्रिंग द फंक्शनल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द रिटर्न टू लेबर लैंड एंड कैपिटल एज डिटर्मिन बाय फैक्टर प्राइसिस यूटिलाइजेशन लेवल्स एंड द कॉन्सिक्वेंट शेयर ऑफ नेशनल इनकम दैट आर गेटिंग टू दर दैट आर टेकन बाय ओनर्स ऑफ ईच फैक्टर ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द वेजिस और द इंटरेस्ट it means they must be paid according to their marginal productivities and uh, eliminate the size distribution the functional income distribution of an economy translated into the size distribution by which by knowledge of how ownership and control over productive asset and labor skills are concentrated and distributed throughout the population and moderating the size distribution at the upper level through progressive taxation of personal income and wealth such taxation increases government revenues that decrease the share of disposable income of the very rich revenues that can with good policies be invested in human capital and rural and other lagging infrastructural needs thereby promoting inclusive growth okay progressive taxation is the tax will increase as your income will increase okay that will also reduce your um poverty it means now uh, the poor people who are not getting the facilities they will get the facilities now and uh, moderating the size distribution at the lower level there are actually uh, also the some policies to uh, reduce poverty also you can think by your own that how could you do this what uh, policies should be made for mitigating the poverty and here uh, the there must be investment in human and social capital of the poor okay it means the uh, there must be more skillful workers and here the uh, there must be more facilities uh, given to the poorer people and there must be provision of the public goods and social services for them and reduce the concentration of economic and political power the income should not be concentrated among the few people now uh, this is actually uh, the chapter has been ended here of uh, poverty inequality and growth and uh, the case study has been given in this chapter uh, as you can see uh, at the end of the chapter the case study is given institutions inequality and incomes they have given the case study for the Uh, to other countries and uh, for your further information you can make a case study for your economy this is available on your in your uh, book at the end of the chapter okay make the case study according to this okay and in this uh, case study they have uh, made the poverty and the human uh, development also and long run factors in comparative development they have explained the population education policies in different so you can see and you can make the um, 
make this for yourself and there are some questions for discussions you must see this these questions um, for discussions uh, uh, for each and every question each and every chapter okay so here uh, you can easily see that there are questions for uh, discussions that uh, for example what is the relationship between Lorentz curve and Gini coefficient give some examples how Lorentz curve and Gini coefficient can be used as summary measure of in inequality okay what are the principal economic characteristics of high poverty groups describe the Kuznets inverted u hypothesis okay is progress being made in the fight against poverty why or why not means you can talk about your uh, economy also There are a lot of questions and uh, obviously uh, we, we are explaining here as uh, whenever I was taking the classes I also give the examples uh, of uh, uh, or I mostly give you the um, case study or I mostly give you the different notes for the reading. So. Um, slow and steady uh, you can win the race and uh, don't get panic you can uh, prepare yourself for your final exams also go through the lecture every time um, this is my uh, advice to all the students that go through the lecture and must uh, you must read every topic from your book and uh, get the information from Google Economic Survey of Pakistan, Ministry of Finance. Also, you can um, get so many po points about uh, them. As uh, this is a very interesting subject and. Uh, you can get so many information about that this subject is very wide you cannot uh, only think that uh, you can concentrate only on book or you can concentrate only on uh, lecture or maybe uh, there can be so many questions uh, but here uh, obviously you can ask the questions in the google classroom make sure please uh, you can ask the question in google classroom because that is uh, official and uh, we can give the answer to you there and so many students were asking the question about assignment as this is uh, the case study is given to you as an um, task for you and you can make your case study for your own Get the data of Pakistan economy and make a case study. How many? Uh, what is the population, poverty, and growth? Okay, how these are affecting? What policies should be used? What policy are using by your uh, government? How much expenditure is used? Okay, what remedial measures are used? For this purpose, I have given you this economic survey of Pakistan. You can get the information from here. Uh, if you are finding any question, any query, any problem, you can uh, ask from me. Uh, okay. So, hope for the best. Thanks for your attention.